Hey guys, Fred here. The following clips are from Elders Rising, episode 9. And hope you enjoy. Okay, section 3. And it says, The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators from each state, chosen by the legislature thereof, for six years, and each senator shall have one vote. So, that first paragraph states that even though that we vote for our senators every six years that was not the original intent the original intent was for the for the state legislature to choose who went to better represent the states and i and as no, a whole also a note the six years is opposed to the if you remember in art in section three in section two they talked about the two years for the house of representatives and that was it, 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 the Senate is meant to be a more stable body than the House of Representatives. It's meant to be more stable. The age, if you notice, the age is different. Oh, we haven't gotten into that. I'm sorry. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. You want me to, you want so, me to read now? Can, uh, no, I'll read. Good. Continuing on. Immediately after, they shall be assembled in consequence of the first election. They shall be divided as equally as may be into three classes. The seats of the senators of the first class shall be vacated at the expiration of the second year of the second class at the expiration of the fourth year, and of the third class at the expiration of the sixth year, so that one-third may be chosen every second year. And if vacancies happen by a resignation or otherwise during the recess of the legislature of any state, the executive thereof may make temporary appointments until the next meeting of the legislature, which shall then fill such vacancies. So notice that they again in in that stability they don't want at any one election to overseat uh, more than a third of the senate so only a third of the senate at any given time will be changing hands to maintain that stability exactly because that's important exactly um you know it also stated that if there is a vacancy then the state legislature is supposed to choose a new senator. And if the state legislature is out of session, then the governor is supposed to appoint temporary a temporary replacement until the next election. Mm -hmm. No person shall be a senator who shall have who shall not have attained to the age of 30 years and been nine years a citizen of the United States, and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state for which he shall be chosen. Once again, you have an age requirement, a citizenship requirement, and it says again that you have to be a citizen, well, an inhabitant of that state in which you are running for office. I notice the age requirement as well. If I remember right, the House of Representatives was 25. It is. And the Senate was 30. 30. And that just indicates how they're expecting the Senate to be made up of a body of individuals who are of uh, more se more seasoned in the sense of like they're they're older. And again, that stability is 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 um, seems to be key. Yes. Continuing on, the Vice President of the United States shall be President of the Senate but shall have no vote unless they be equally divided. The Senate shall choose their other officers and also a president pro tempore in the absence of the vice president or when he shall exercise the office of president of the United States. So the vice president is the president of the Senate. He doesn't have a vote unless it's to break a tie. Um, and it's once again saying this, the Senate shall choose with a U mm -hmm. um, their own officers. So the Senate majority leader, the minority leader, so on and so forth. This, um, the, the Senate gets to make its own decisions on how it's organized. Yes. Um, and then um, they can also choose a president pro tem. <clears throat> if the vice president is unavailable or if he is now the president. Moving on. The Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When, sit when sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath of affirmation 
When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall pre preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. So that's the the Senate doesn't. <coughs> I was trying to remember exactly um, if if the in the Article Two, it, it, I'm trying to remember exactly if it says if it's all inclusive when it says the House of Representatives for for example for an impeachment of a president. But this is this actually, I believe the way I'm understanding it is to all offices in the the government for um, the House of Representatives are the one who says okay, this person is. This person is, um, they, 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 they vote to try someone, and the Senate is the one who actually is the try, is the, the ones who try them. Yes. And then, I said, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two thirds of the members present. So, you have to have two thirds. Two thirds of the members present. Which, if there's, an impeachment they should all be there you would think so but <laughs> um there was only two presidents that have been tried for being impeached this johnson and clinton if i remember right trump was tried oh now trump too as well but he was not convicted and all all three of them have not been convicted in from the senate moving on judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust or profit under the United States, but the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to the law. What that's saying is the Senate doesn't have the authority to put someone in jail. They have the authority to tell someone that they are not, to basically take away the, someone's ability to be a representative. Or a president, or a any any public office. Is that is that correct? But it, then that last clause says that um, the the person is still they, they can still be tried by the ju by the judicial branch of the government, and they can still suffer the the penalties of jail and of of uh, whatever crimes they've committed. But it, that that jurisdiction lies under the judicial branch, not the Senate. The Senate is just telling people, okay, you can no longer be. Uh, an elected official or a representative or, or a president or whatever it is that they're charged with. Yes, and that concludes Section 3. Okay, Section 4. The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time, by law, make or alter such regulations except as to the place, places of choosing senators. So one of the things that that um, brings back to is in the Declaration of Independence, if you, know, if you remember, they, they declared how part of the grievances was they were, they were the election, the, the, any time that they had uh, votes and that kind of thing, they were made... They were made in places that could be difficult to get to, or it, it was hard for them to actually be able to, to be involved. And so the, the state has the ability to set the, the rules for their, what, what they're going to, um, how their, their election is going to be run, but then the federal government can come in and change those rules. Um, that being said, the federal government does not have the ability to change where the, the the senators are elected. Does that sum that up? Pretty much. The Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, and such meeting shall be on the first Monday in December, unless they shall, by law, appoint a different day. So one of the interesting things here is there were people that were actually concerned that that was too often for Congress to meet. They were like, we won't have that, anything to do once every year was was a lot for them mm -hmm. and and so it's like the, the the concern became well if we don't have anything to do people are going to find things to do which that's what the government has been doing for the last ever <laughs> and it, and and they're getting into people's lives in ways that the government was not meant to be getting into people's lives 
And so I, I thought that as I was as I was reading into this, I thought it was interesting how the the one of the concerns when they when they um, when this was laid out was oh that's going to be too often only once a year that's going to be too often and that 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 goes to show the mindset of how the our founding fathers intended the government to be a small part of the population and be a small as small as possible not a large behemoth of bureaucracy the smaller the government the harder it is to interfere with your life bingo bingo which is why we should all be for a smaller government regardless of who's who who's in office if it's smaller it's going to be better for you um, one of the things to note as well is it talked about here how, if you notice in Article um, 3, it talks about how the the states were to appoint the senators. That was changed in the 17th Amendment. Again, thanks for watching Elders Rising, Episode 9. Um, hey, buddy. If you liked, subscribe and share and have a great day. Rock the party, everybody. Regardless of what Mitch says, rock the party.